Hello class, it's your favorite English teacher, Sarush. I know, I know, it's been a while, I was really busy, but I promise you that I will finish this level and I will teach the new book, the new edition as well. Now today, as you can see from the title, we're going to talk about music and emotion. So without further ado, let's get to it. Everyone, look at the pictures. What do you see? Hmm, some musical instruments, an orchestra. Okay, very good. Now, I need you to listen and match what you hear with a word from the list. So, listen and number. Let's go. 3.29 1 Stop, stop. Okay, we're going to take it again from bar 69. Okay. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Right, very good. Now, I need you to listen and check your answers. Practice saying the words. And tell me, what other words do you know for instruments and musicians? Okay. 3.30 1 A cello 2 Drums. Three. A soprano. Four. A bass guitar. Five. An orchestra. Six. A 
a saxophone. 7. A flute. 8. Stop, stop. Okay, we're going to take it again from bar 69. A conductor. 9. A choir. 10. A keyboard. Eleven. A violin. Awesome. And here are some words for you. For example, for instruments, trumpet, triangle, recorder, harp, harmonica. Okay. And these are the uh, other ones. Musician, cellist, or cellist, I must say, cellist. Drummer, bass guitarist, pianist, violinist, and keyboard player, okay, rapper, tenor, singer, okay, well done, very good, a very good start, now let's continue. Everyone, foreign words in English, or we can call them as borrowed words, okay, so English has borrowed many words from other languages, in here, for example, we have Italian, Greek, and French, okay. Now, first, I need you to listen and tell me how the pink letters are pronounced. This is your turn. Let's do it. 3.31 From Italian Cello Concerto Mezzo-soprano From Greek Orchestra Choir. Chorus. Microphone. Rhythm. Symphony. From French. Ballet. Encore. Genre. All right. Now everyone look, for example, in cello, letter C is pronounced as CHE, or mezzo, okay, or orchestra, soprano, choir, chorus, microphone, rhythm, symphony, ballet, and encore, genre, okay? So, these are some differences, because these words come from uh, other cultures, other countries, so they maintain their original sounds. Very nice. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this is your turn. Put these words in front of Italian, Greek, and French. You can also do this with your friends. You can use Google to help you. You have all the time in the world. You can stop the video and you can do it together. But if you have done it, well, Play the video. Let's check with me. All right. 3.32 From Italian Barista Cappuccino Graffiti Macchiato Paparazzi Villa Well, that was easy. From Greek Architecture Hypochondriac, philosophy, photograph, psychic, psychologist. From French, bouquet, chauffeur, chef, chic, croissant, fiance. Mm. That was easy, wasn't it? But also interesting. So tell me, 
Has English borrowed any words from your language? Search it up. And now, it's time to speak it up. First of all, I need you to ask and answer questions with a partner. For example, let's start your music. Do you have a favorite kind of music, song, piece of classical music, symphony, sonata, etc.? Band, solo artist, composer, conductor. Do you play a musical instrument? If yes, what instrument or instruments do you play? How long have you been playing it? And tell me, have you ever had, have you ever had, or are you taking lessons? Can you read music? Have you ever played in a band or orchestra? If no, have you ever tried to learn to play an instrument? And why did you stop learning? Is there an instrument you would like to learn to play? Have you ever sung in a choir, performed in front of a lot of people, or taken part in a musical talent contest? Concerts. Have you ever been to a good concert recently? Which artist or band would you most like to see in concert? And what's the best live concert you have ever been to? So, I need you to write your answers to these questions and compare your answers with your friends. Take your time. There's no rush. And speak it up. All the way to my favorite part, reading. But before we start, I have a question for you. Think of a song or piece of music that you remember hearing and liking when you were a child. We're talking about your childhood. Where did you first hear it? How old were you? Why did you like it? Okay? Write your answers to these questions. There's no rush. And now, to our reading. Okay. Look at the title of a newspaper article. What music would you play to an alien? And I need you to read the article once and tell me why did the writer choose this title? All right, it's your turn. Take your time, read the article and answer the question. Six and a half hours later. I can hear music for the first time ever, wrote Austin Chapman a 23-year-old filmmaker from California. What should I listen to? All right, let's get to it. Austin, you see, was born profoundly deaf. For his whole life, music has been a mystery. I had seen people make a fool of themselves, singing and moving wildly on the dance floor, he says. I had also seen people move to tears by a song which was probably the hardest thing for me to understand. Then, just a few weeks ago, his parents suggested that he try a newly developed hearing aid that they had heard about. He went to the doctors with no great expectations, but when the doctor turned on the hearing aid, he was stunned. I sat in the doctor's office, frozen, as a cacophony of sounds attacked me. The whir of a computer, the hum of the air conditioning, the clacking of the keyboard, the sound of my friend's voice. Austin could hear. And for the first time ever, the world of music was open to him. It didn't take him long to decide what to do. He was going to listen to music nonstop. Later that day, he heard his first piece, Mozart's beautiful Lacrimosa, from his Requiem, in a friend's car, actually. He listened to that piece in a friend's car, okay? Lacrimosa. He wept, means he cried. So did everybody else in the car. The experience, he says, was like the first time you kiss a girl. His friends went on to play him the Rolling Stones, Michael Jackson, Sigur Rose, Radiohead, Elvis, and Pink Floyd. But Austin knew that there was a vast universe of music, music to explore, so he decided to seek further help. He described his situation on reddit.com, and so far he has received more than 14,000 suggestions. 
as a strategy, he has decided to follow the advice of someone who posted this message on the site. This is like introducing an alien to music of Earth. Once you're tired of classical, you could start with music from the 50s and progress through each decade. That way you can really see the growth of modern music. Austin adopted that system, but he uh, but chose to start much earlier with a piece of Guilame de Machau. I'm very bad with names. Called Agnes Day from the 14th century. Currently he's listening to four or five hours of music a day because he had he had never heard music before. Austin isn't influenced by nostalgia, influenced by nostalgia and via the internet, he can listen to just anything ever composed. Consequently, his experience may help us to understand more about musical taste. So, what has he been listening to? It seems that no one genre dominates, although he says he doesn't really like country music. Too depressing. His favorite piece for now is Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody. He also likes uh, Beethoven's or Beethoven's Ninth Symphony and Frank Sinatra's Fly Me to the Moon. But so far he has not listened to the most recommended band, the Beatles. I'm waiting for a special occasion, he says. Austin is also learning how to hear. When we met at a cafe in West Hollywood, we took a table for, uh, far from the street to avoid the background noise of traffic. The ability to ignore unwanted noise is something that will uh, take him time. This may help explain why Austin says that silence is still my favorite sound. When I turn my hearing aid off, my thoughts become clearer. It's absolutely peaceful. This was adapted from the Times magazine. Okay, very good. So why did the writer choose this title? Well, obviously, uh, you know, this uh, person, Austin Chapman, before getting his new hearing aid, Austin Chapman had never heard music. He went on the internet and asked for suggestions of what to listen to. Someone on the side, reddit.com, wrote that introducing Austin to music is like introducing music to an alien, since we imagine that aliens would never have heard any music either. But we're not done yet. Je ladies and gentlemen, I need you to listen again and find words or phrases meaning these concepts. Again, back to you. 12 seconds later. All right. So, profoundly, completely. Make a fool of themselves. Behave in a way that makes other people think you're stupid. Number three. Moved to tears, started crying because of a strong emotion. Number four, with no great expectations, not thinking that anything positive would happen. All right, and a cacophony, a mixture of loud and unpleasant sounds. Great, but we're not done yet. You should follow me. All right, now before we move further, what kind of sounds do you think were pumped? And clacking R. Okay, so let's do it together. You can also search it on the internet and hear them. But we're a low continuous sound. For example, the sound made by the regular movement of a machine or the wings of a bird. Hum. A low continuous sound. For example, the sound made by a machine such as a refrigerator. And clacking. If two hard objects clack, they make a short loud sound when they hit each other okay so uh, like the click of a keyboard yeah very good not bad now read the rest of the article again with a partner and in your own words say why the article mentions the following pieces of music or artists for example number one we have lacrimosa from mozart's with Poem, or the rolling stones all right you can use google to help you as well I'll be waiting, and then we check together. A few moments later. Back to the game. So, Lacrimosa is the first piece of music Austin listened to, and it made him cry. Now, as for the Rolling Stones, 
After La Cremosa, his friends played all these bands and singers. Rolling Stones, Michael Jackson, Sigur Rose, Radiohead, Elvis and Pink Floyd. And music from the 50s? Well, someone on Reddit, the website, told Austin to start with classical music and then move, move on to music from the 50s. And after that, Agnes Day, Austin decided to listen to music from each decade and he started with Gualamo the Mashut. Oh, I'm so bad with names. Agnes Day. Okay, so after that it happened. Country music. Well, Austin doesn't like country music because he thinks it's too depressing. And Queen's Bohemian uh, Rhapsody. All right, this is his favorite piece of uh, uh, this is his favorite piece for the time being. Now, Ninth Symphony and Sinatra's "Flight Me to the Moon." The, these are two pieces of music he also likes. The Beatles. He hasn't listened to them yet. He is waiting for a good occasion. And last one, Silence. This is still his favorite sound. It makes him feel peaceful and that's it but we're not done it's time for you to speak with your partner it's time for you to share your experiences so with a partner you and your friend why do you think the journalist uh, says that austin's experience may help us understand more about musical taste imagine you were going to recommend music to austin which song or piece of music would you suggest? Which decade would you suggest? Which composer would you suggest? Which band? Which singer? And I need you to answer these questions about yourself and your favorites. Just like before. Speak it up. Your game. And it's headphones time. Time to listen. Okay. First, listen to some short pieces of music. How do they make you feel? Would you like to continue listening? Okay, let's test you. 3.33 1 3 Four. Five. Six. Seven. Nine.
Ladies and gentlemen, you're going to listen to John Sloboda, a music psychologist. And he's going to talk about why we listen to music. So these are the notes. Everybody, note-taking is a very important skill in your university and in TOEFL exam. Okay? So try to listen with your friends and complete the notes. Okay? Then you can check the notes with your friends as well. And you can listen multiple times to practice. Now, all you need to do, you and your friends, listen and complete the notes. Let's go. 3.34 I think it's very interesting that human beings are the only animals which listen to music for pleasure. A lot of research has been done to find out why we listen to music, and there seem to be three main reasons. Firstly, we listen to music to make us remember important moments in the past. For example, when we met someone for the first time. Think of Humphrey Bogart in the film Casablanca saying, Darling, they're playing our song. When we hear a certain piece of music, we remember hearing it for the first time in some very special circumstances. Obviously, this music varies from person to person. Secondly, we listen to music to help us change activities. If we want to go from one activity to another, we often use music to help us make the change. For example, we might play a certain kind of music to prepare us to go out in the evening. Or we might play another kind of music to relax us when we get home from work. That's mainly why people listen to music in cars, and they often listen to one kind of music when they're going to work and another kind when they're coming home. The same is true of people on buses and trains with their iPods. The third reason why we listen to music is to intensify the emotion that we're feeling. For example, if we're feeling sad, sometimes we want to get even sadder, so we play sad music. Or we're feeling angry, and we want to intensify the anger, then we play angry music. Or, when we're planning a romantic dinner, we lay the table, we light candles, and then we think, what music would make this even more romantic? All right, very good, very nice. So again, check your notes with your friends. Okay, now, so, why do we listen to music to make us remember important moments in the past? For example, when we met someone for the first time, and to help us to change activities. For example, we play a certain kind of music to prepare us to go out in the evening, or another kind to relax us when we get home from work, and to intensify the emotion that we are feeling. For example, if we are sad, we play sad music to make us even sadder. If we are feeling angry, we play angry music to make us angry. We play romantic music to make, uh, to make us more romantic for a romantic dinner, for example. And... Now you're going to listen to John and he's going to explain how music can affect the way we feel. Again, listen and complete the rest of the notes. Try to write the examples as well. Let's go. 3.35 Let's take three important human emotions. Happiness, sadness and anger. When people are happy, they speak faster and their voice is higher. When they are sad, they speak more slowly and their voice is lower. And when people are angry, they raise their voices or shout. Babies can tell whether their mother is happy or not simply by the sound of her voice, not by her words. What music does is it copies this and it produces the same emotions. So faster, higher pitched music will sound happy. Slow music, with lots of falling pitches, will sound sad. Loud music, with irregular rhythms, will sound angry. It doesn't matter how good or bad the music is. If it has these characteristics, it will make you experience this emotion. Let me give you some examples. For happy, for example, the first movement of Beethoven's Seventh Symphony. For 
For angry, say Mars from the planets by Holst. And for sad, something like Albinoni's Adagio for strings. Of course, the people who exploit this most are the people who write film soundtracks. They can take a scene which visually has no emotion, and they can make the scene either scary, or calm, or happy, just by the music they write to go with it. Think of the music in the shower scene in Hitchcock's film Psycho. <laughs> All you can see is a woman having a shower, but the music makes it absolutely terrifying. All right, very good. So these are the notes. Three important human emotions, happiness, sadness, and anger. And uh, how we feel uh, affects the way we speak. Happy, you speak faster, higher, sad, you speak more slowly, lower. Angry, raise voice, you shout. And music copies this like this, fast, high music makes us happy, slow music with falling pitches makes us feel sad, loud music with irregular rhythms makes us feel angry. And for example, he gave examples for happy, Beethoven's uh, Seventh Symphony, and for angry, Mars from the planets by Holst. And for sad, Adiago for strings, yeah, Albinoni's, yeah. And this is especially exploited in movies, for example, the movie Psycho. And he talked about the scene where the woman is taking a shower and, you know, this music plays, with, which makes it very terrifying. But you have to speak about it. You know the drill. Answer the questions and speak with your friends. On a typical day, on a normal day, when and where do you listen to music? Do you listen to different kinds of music at different times of a day? What music would you play if you're feeling sad and you wanted, you wanted to feel happier? If you were feeling down and you wanted to feel even worse? If you were feeling furious about something or somebody? If you were feeling stressed and nervous about something and wanted to calm down? If you wanted to create a romantic atmosphere for a special dinner? If you were feeling excited and were, and were getting ready to go out for the evening? And if you were falling in love as easy as that speak it up and compare your answers everyone look at some extracts from the listening that we just did all right put the verbs in parentheses in infinitive with two or the base form without two or the gerund ing form okay take your time do it there's no rush now listen and check your answers if you have done it. Let's go. 3.36 1. Firstly, we listen to music to make us remember important moments in the past. 2. When we hear a certain piece of music, we remember hearing it for the first time. 3. If we want to go from one activity to another, we often use music to help us make the change. All right. Very nice, very good. Now, look, look at these two sentences. I remember meeting him for the first time. Please remember to meet him at the train station. So, which one is about remembering the past and which one is about remembering something for the future? Tell me. So, the first one is about the past and the second one is about the future. You got the basics right. Now, follow me. Gerunds and infinitives. First, listen. 3.37 1. 
I enjoy listening to music. I couldn't help laughing. Two. I want to speak to you. They can't afford to buy a new car. Three. It might rain tonight. I'd rather eat in than go out tonight. All right, great. So look, for gerund, we use it after some verbs and expressions. For example, enjoy, can't help. And when a phrasal verb is followed by another verb, the verb is in the gerund. For example, keep on, give up, look forward to. For infinitive, we use it after some expressions and some certain words. For example, want, afford. And for the base form, without to, we use them after modal verbs and some, some expressions. For example, might, would rather. And after the verbs make and let. And in the passive voice, you know, the objective way, make is followed by the infinitive. For example, look, my boss makes us work hard. At school, we were made to wear a uniform. Now look, there are some verbs here like love, hate, and prefer. Okay, these are usually followed by gerund. Why? Because they are somehow, uh, we call them feelings. Yeah, for example, I like swimming. Okay, or I like to swim first thing in the morning when there aren't many people there. This is specific. So if there's a specific, you use the uh, infinitive way. Or, for example, I prefer riding a bike to driving. You see, you'll get the hang of it. You just need to practice. But we're not done here. Follow me. There's more. And here we have some verbs ca that can be followed by either gerund or infinitive. There's no difference. But first, listen. 3.38 1. It started to rain. It started raining. 2. Remember to lock the door. I remember going to Lima as a child. Sorry, I forgot to do it. I'll never forget seeing the Taj Mahal. I tried to open the window. Try calling Yi Yi on her cell phone. You need to clean the car. The car needs cleaning. Okay. Very good. So, look, some verbs can be followed by the gerund or the infinitive the, with no difference in the meaning. The difference uh, doesn't change the meaning. So, the meaning is the same, like start, begin, continue. Some verbs can be followed by the gerund or the infinitive with a change in meaning. For example, look, remember infinitive. You remember first, then you do something. For example, but remember plus gerund, you do something that you, then you remember it. Okay, or forget infinitive, you didn't remember to do something. Forget gerund, you did something and you won't forget it. Okay, it is more common than negative, common in the negative form. Or try infinitive, make an effort to do something. Try gerund, experiment to see if something works. Need plus gerund is a passive construction. For example, needs cleaning, needs to be clean. And you can see them. For example, look, sorry, I forgot to do it. I'll never forget seeing Taj Mahal. It's talking about some past experience. Okay, now let's practice together. As always, we have two sets. So for the first set, complete with a gerund or an infinitive of the verb from the list. So this is the list. And for the next one, circle the correct form. You can stop the video, take your time, do it yourself. There's no rush. Okay, haste makes waste. Okay, and if you have done it, check with your friends. Now let's do it together. The first one is that I'm, I'm exhausted. I don't feel like going out tonight. Number one, I suggest or suggest taking a taxi to the airport tomorrow. It'll be much quicker. Number two, even though the snow was really deep, we managed to drive to the local store and back. Number three, we'd better... Do some shopping. There isn't much food for the weekend. Number four, I'm very impatient. I can't stand waiting in lines. Number five, I was exhaust exhausted and a young man offered to carry my bags. My parents used to make me clean my room. We threatened to call the police if the boys didn't stop throwing stones. 
Number eight, do you feel like coming to the gym with me? Number nine, I prefer eating out or to eat out. Both of them are correct instead of getting it, getting takeout. And number 10, I don't mind working late tonight if you want me to. Okay, now as for this part, number one, I'll never forget seeing the Grand Canyon for the first time. So it's talking about some past experience. I need to call the helpline. My computer has crashed. Okay. And have you tried to, have you tried taking the, a pill to help you sleep? Number four, I'm sure my keys are somewhere. I can remember locking the door this morning. Number five, I had to run home because I had forgotten to turn the oven off. Number six, our house needs painting. Do you know any good paint house painters? Number seven, did you remember to send your sister a card? It's her birthday today. And last one, we tried to learn or learning to ski last winter, but we weren't very good at it. And that's it for the grammar. You just need to practice and you just need to listen on a daily basis. Now let's finish this session. It's time to share your experiences. Tell your partner one thing that you'll never forget saying for the first time. Or you sometimes forget to do before you leave the house in the morning. Or tell, you so uh, tell your partner something you remember doing when you were under five years old. Or something you have to remember to do today or this week. Something needs to, that needs to be done in your house or apartment. For example, the kitchen ceiling needs repainting. Tell your partner something that you need to do this evening or something you tried to learn but couldn't. Or last but not least, tell your partner something you have tried doing when you can't sleep at night. All right, share your experiences. That's it. And that's the session for today. Everybody, I apologize for the long delay for this level. I will try to publish on a daily basis. But sometimes I'm really busy, I have students, I have consultations. But I will do my best to deliver what I promise and what I owe to you guys. As always, practice on a daily basis. I've got your back. You can always contact me with the channel's WhatsApp line. And the slides are pinned in the description part. You can download them and use them to teach or to study. And last but not least, non-negotiable greatness. Make it non-negotiable to practice every day and you will achieve your goals, my friends. Until then, bye-bye.